Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here. I am back again today doing another video, and today I'm looking at my early 2021 NBA All-Star picks, so I'm not giving you any suspense on this one. I'm just putting them right on screen for everybody to see. I'm just going to be talking about each player I put on here and why I put them, and people I left off and why I left them off, um, and basically just going from there and kind of proceeding. So... Um, I do have a few controversial ones, and I'll get into those. And um, just straight off the bat, I don't have Bam out of bio on the list, and I know that people are gonna rip me for that, and it's fine. I get it. Bam is not on the list, and the main reason I left him off is like the Heat are bad this year. They are not a good team. I get that they have a lot of players out with injury, and Bam himself is actually playing good. Um, and I do have a couple of risky picks, um, but so like. Just let me get it out of the way first. In the East, Julius Randle and Tobias Harris, I put them both as all-stars. It's probably one of these two that shouldn't be picked, but in my opinion, I think that if this, if a certain player has like what will definitely be the best season of their career, and they're probably never going to reach this height again, I think that I'd rather reward them with the all-star appearance than the guy who's going to make like six more. And so for that reason, I left Bam off because if you – like. If you look at numbers, let me just plead the case for each of these guys really quick. Julius Randle is putting up 22, 11, and 6 on the like 50% shooting from the field, which is pretty good. And then he's shooting the best for his career from 3, 35%. And yes, Bam Adebayo is putting up good, if not better, stats than that. But Julius Randle is taking what most people would have considered the worst roster in the NBA and they're like the seventh seed or sixth seed in the East right now, which is way higher than anybody thought that they would be. And so for that reason, I'm giving Julius Randle some credit and I'm putting him here. And then Tobias Harris, you could argue that Bam should make it over him or Chris Middleton should make it over him. Um, Tobias Harris has been the second best player on the best team in the East this year. Yes, he's been better than Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons has been disappointing. Look at Harris's stats and just the way he's playing. They signed him to the max contract to be the dude that hits the clutch knockdown shots. He's been doing that. He's shooting like 52% from the field and like 41% from three, which is amazing. As far as efficiency goes, he's putting up 20 points and seven rebounds a game and like four assists. And overall, I think he's just... Basically, I gave him this all-star appearance much like how Chris Middleton's made the last two he's not like the best player on his team but he's like his team wouldn't be nearly as good as they are without him so Tobias Harris is on here so I covered those two guys at the beginning just because I feel like I wanted to get the snubs out of the way I feel like if the Bucks would have been the one seed I would have picked Middleton over Harris but because Philly is better I picked Harris and I left um, Bam off because even though he's playing good and I, I just think that I get that the Heat don't have Butler for most of the season and they've played a lot of bad players, but I still think in a relatively, um, just in the situation they're in, I think that they should be better than they are. So for that reason, I left him off. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, to address one of the other ones that people may not think he deserves to be on here, he has had a really good season, putting up like 23 and 11 on really good efficiency from three and um, good efficiency from the field overall and he's basically the only reason the magic aren't the worst team in the nba uh, and definitely the worst offense in the nba he's the lone bright spot of their offense really so i have to have him on here uh and sabonis the pacers are like the three seed right now and so i think he has to be on here as the best player on the pacers Besides that, I think a lot of the other picks in the East make a lot of sense. You know, Colin Sexton's putting up a really efficient 25 points per game that no one saw coming, so I had to put him on here. Levine is putting up an efficient 27, and again, he's basically one of the only reasons that the Bulls aren't like the 15 seed in the East, so I had to have him on here in my opinion. Jalen Brown is similar to what Levine's doing, but just also playing good defense, so an efficient 27 points per game, but um, really good defense. Uh, besides that, James Harden, you know, he's had a weird start to the season, but he is still averaging 25, 6, and 11 assists per game, leading the NBA in assists this season. So I had to have him on there. Um, 
And Bradley Beal is pretty much a no-brainer, too. Although the Wizards are really bad, he's putting up a 35 points per game on good efficiency, and the Wizards would certainly be winless right now if not for him. Um, and then the other ones that I think are pretty straightforward in the East are Embiid, Durant, and Giannis. You know, those guys are all pretty straightforward. And by the way, this list is not like the order in which I think they deserve to be picked. Like, my starters would be... It wouldn't be like Levine and Sexton necessarily starting in the East. My starters would be Beal, um, Jalen Brown, and B. Durant and Giannis. So it's not like because I have Sabonis above those guys, I'm starting him. It's just that I was just thinking through and put them down as I thought of them. Um, beyond that, in going to the West, again, no particular order really, but, but I do have a couple of snubs here. The main one that I thought of being um, Devin Booker. So to me, it came down to Devin Booker versus C.J. McCollum. And I think, like, although Booker's playing decent, McCollum is distinctly having what will be certainly the best year of his career, in my opinion. Sort of similar to, like, what Julius Randle's doing in the East, and I think, like, you have to reward McCollum. He's putting up a really efficient 26 points per game, a career high in assists at, 20, at um, 5 per game. And... You could make the argument when he's been playing this year, he's been the better player than Lillard on the Blazers. You could make the argument. Um, if he continues to be injured for a long stretch, I mean, then I think Booker will overtake him and take his spot in the All-Star game. But besides that, I like him. The other oddity on the list some people might think is Christian Wood. But as I looked at um, front court players in the West, I was trying to think, and I thought, you know, maybe if DeMar DeRozan, I guess is considered a small forward. I would put him in over Christian Wood, maybe. But even so, I think Christian Wood has arguably been the best player on the Rockets all year and a big contributor to why they've had whatever level of at least close to 500 basketball they've been playing. It can largely be attributed to Christian Wood. So I put him in as sort of the dude who made it that nobody would think about him, sort of like how last year Bam made it and nobody thought about Bam. But... Yeah, I got Christian Wood. And then a lot of these are people you would kind of expect. Because of their record, I have two All-Stars for the Jazz, Gobert and Mitchell. Mitchell's played great this year, same with Gobert. And then a lot of the dudes who are pretty much automatic locks every year with their healthy and playing at their normal level. Lillard, Curry, Doncic, LeBron, Kawhi, um, Go uh, Jokic, AD. And then PG, of course, makes it because he's having a really good year and a really bounce-back year. So... The West is a lot less exciting, I guess I'd say, in that like there's there aren't nearly as many like surprise picks as the East, but that's just because the West has so much more talent in it that it's much more straightforward to pick the All Stars there, and it's hard to have many snubs because like yes, Devin Booker is worthy of an All Star appearance, but like are you gonna put him in over Curry? No. Are you gonna put him in over Doncic? No. Are you gonna put him in over like McCollum is really to me the only one that you could argue should be kicked out for. Um, Devin Booker, but also the Suns aren't playing as good as a lot of people thought that they would, so for that reason I felt fine leaving Devin Booker off, and ultimately there's just a lot of talented dudes and some people aren't going to make it every year. Damian Lillard had a season where he averaged like 28 per game and wasn't an all-star for a couple, like two years straight, so it just happens sometimes. Bradley Beal averaged like 31 points per game last year and didn't make the all-star game. It just happens. So that's all I got for today, guys. Um, just wanted to run through my early all-star picks for the NBA this year, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.